Namaste. Welcome to today's session of the overview webinar series. My name is Dimple and I'm the servant leader at Indica Courses, a pioneering Indica EdTech enterprise in the indigenous knowledge systems domain. We create and curate online courses across various IKS disciplines for lifelong learners who share our belief in the transformative power of timeless indigenous wisdom. To know more about our work and our offerings, please visit our website, indica.courses. A cursory glance at our catalog shall reveal a plethora of courses across various streams of knowledge open for enrollment, such as rituals and mental well-being, exploring the scientific connection. This is a self-paced course and you can produce it at your own pace. There's another course such as the Introduction to Rabindranath Tagore, Life and Works, open for enrollment now. Yet another course that you would encounter there uh, is an Introduction to the Tirkural. And we also have a free course on Sharada, on Sharada Lipi. In addition to these courses, there are other courses too, which you could uh, go through and if interested, enroll in the same. So I would really request you to visit indica.courses and go through our entire catalog of uh, ongoing and upcoming courses. Uh, you can enroll, gift, and recommend these courses too. Please do bookmark our website for your ready reference and also follow us on social media to stay updated about our ongoing and upcoming courses. The overview webinar series has been created by us as an interface for prospective learners to understand what a particular Indica course would offer so that they can make an informed enrollment decision. We have organized a number of such webinars in the last few months, and you can watch the recordings thereof on Indic Academy's YouTube channel. We shall share the playlist link in the chat box for your reference and further dissemination in a bit. Today's webinar is about the upcoming Indica course, Introduction to Temple Architecture, that offers a historical and cultural overview of Hindu temples with a special emphasis on their art and architecture. It will provide a deep insight into the various tangible and intangible aspects of Hindu temples in India. The course begins from the 15th of March. Live sessions will be conducted on every Wednesday at 7 p.m. IST. Our faculty is the young erudite scholar Sri Sushant Bharti, and he shall take us through the details of the course in a bit. But before I invite him to present an overview, let me introduce Sushant Ji to you. Sri Sushant Bharti is a conservation architect and researcher based in New Delhi. His broad interests lie in understanding the diverse architectural heritage of India. His area of research is centered around Indian temple architecture, iconography, and the cultural heritage of Braj, known for its complex religious setting. He has previously worked with the National Museum New Delhi to document the cultural heritage of Uttar Pradesh and Ladakh. As a part of this work, he was tasked with conceptualizing designs for new museums at Kashi Vishwanath and Kedarnath. He has been a keen advocate for the protection of the tangible and built heritage of the Braj region. Sushant Ji was elected under PM UR Fellowship by the National Book Trust Ministry of Education to write a book on the Indian independence movement. This book is ready for inauguration or launch uh, in the uh, World Book Fair at Delhi in the next few days. So congratulations for that, Sushant. Sushant is a recipient of the Ideas Research Fellowship 2023 from the Society of Architectural Historians Chicago. He's also a fellow of the Royal Asiatic Society of Ireland and Great Britain and an associate fellow of the Royal Historical Society of London. I welcome our young scholar with such impeccable credentials to now take us through the overview of the course that he is going to teach on Indica courses from 15th. Welcome Sushant Ji, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Dimpal Ji. Let me just... Uh share my screen first and i hope it's visible to you yes indeed you could run yes yes so a warm good evening to everyone present over here and i'm really thankful for each and everyone who is right now over here and spending you know some important time from his busy schedule so the idea of this uh, overview is just to give a gist of you know what i will be doing in another you know 30 hours lecture which is designated uh, for this course and which will start from 15 March onwards. So I would just you know like to uh, uh, first of all you know hint that why you know I personally have been you know dealing uh, with this particular you know area of architecture in a very passionate manner since you know I get into architecture. So uh, currently in India there is a current scenario you know that uh, we do find our education system not giving much importance to the indigenous text and uh, let it be history, literature, architecture, or anything. 
the indigenous sources are been not acknowledged much and in the field of architecture the story is the same uh, when i got enrolled into architecture way back in 2011 uh, the course uh, the curriculum even till date if you see has a lot of you know western influence we are hardly been giving given a much exposure about what sort of architectural heritage this country possess and this was the reason that since graduation i had this urge you know that whenever i get a chance uh, i mean this course is one of those you know uh, i would say the reason that why i opted uh, uh, for this course when Dimple, he approached me that you know that uh, people should know that what this country had uh, irrespective of the region, irrespective of time, irrespective of materials, how the things were conceived in terms of temples. Because temples is something which, when we talk about India, temples are something which actually are the testimony of the, you know, the, the long, uh, rich culture and heritage this country had. And, uh, you know, we know that specifically in North, due to the, uh, a lot of Islamic invasion which started, which started from 10th century onwards, it's very really difficult to study about temple architecture. I mean, we don't have uh, any tangible evidences, but the story is not the same for the other parts of India. But still, because a lot of things have been governed, I mean, I'm sorry that I'm saying this particular statement being a, being a Delhiite, but it is true that a lot of things are being controlled from Delhi, that how the country has to be thought. And that has been the reason that, you know, the why we personally, when we were into architecture, we were, you know, thought that... Uh, uh, only about the history which starts from 10th century onwards. I won't go into the names. I mean, this is a reality which everyone knows. So the purpose of this course is to give a basic insight to the beginners, especially, I mean, if I get a lot of architecture students, young architecture, architecture students for this course, uh, who are in the early phase of their architectural education and to know about that, you know, what uh, are the temple traditions of this country? Uh, the simplistic approach of this course will, I, I believe that it will help the students to gain some basic uh, knowledge and it's a humble att attempt from my side. I mean, so I will just give an, an overview, you know, that what all I will be covering in this course. So, you know, uh, man is a unique uh, creation of Almighty uh, and it has created a lot, lot many things uh, out of consciousness. And culture is one of those inevitable aspects which has, uh, you know, which has been an important creation of mankind and, and also the most essential part of the human life. Culture added a meaning uh, to human life and it made man uh, to live by believing in something supernatural, which acted as a guiding force. And in order to uh, house that particular guiding force, man thought to shelter that particular divine into some sort of shelter. Our temples have been uh, a long, you know, uh, have been a capsule of a history with various geographical settings, with various, I would say, uh, sampradayas, with various, you know, the spiritual forces. And yet, you know, there is a single thread which binds the architectural, the temple architecture of this country. The image making tendency made the man believe in something which he discovered and projected a hidden but real power of world around him. Uh, high mountains, peaks, deep forests, rivers, oceans naturally provoked a sense of divinity inside him, which made him the worst, which, which made him the first worshipping figures. We know that nature worship was first in, in, in this country. And we have the evidences from the, you know, uh, from Harappa civilization that how man, you know, used to uh, worship the natural, uh, you know, uh, elements. If you go and search the things in Vedas, you will find the most of the hymns are dedicated to Agni, Indra, Vayu, because all these things used to, you know, uh, implement and, you know, used to affect the very being and the very life of you know each and every individual and that has been the very history of our country and that actually made him you know to uh, make these sort of shelters for him i mean these are some small uh, you know shelters which you which you are seeing from a place called palsambe and you will see that how things will start you know evolving when i will you know go with uh, go in the end of this lecture that from the small shrines, we will be seeing a lot of big shrines coming up. Because obviously, 
uh, a lot of factors are into the place and you know that actually makes uh, things uh, possible but the very idea is that you know that how to make him place so whatever man got in the history maybe something a, 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 a large granite in a jungle or maybe a small you know tree inside the uh, maybe in his in his uh, courtyard i mean all those things i mean you know acted as a place for him to give shelter to this uh, particular you know um, deity and actually it started all from a small shrine which was which is mostly called a sthan and till date if you go in villages you will see a small place especially in the northern part of the india which is known as sthan here you can see a photograph of a sthan which is near one of the most important site of indian temple architecture this particular sthan is re is very near to one of the most earliest specimen of indian temple architecture which was built by guptas and it's there in the place called devgarh i am sure most of the people who are attending this webinar right now who had a who would have you know just uh, got a simple uh, understanding of temple architecture would know that what sort of importance uh, devgarh has in the history of you know uh, indian uh, temple architecture and after small shrines there was a system of housing the deity in a small edicule or house of which we can get idea from the ancient civilization of indus valley also there has been some belief that you know about the idea of temple during indus valley among the scholars but uh, what cannot be denied is the development of fire practice in the vedic age in the later part of the civilization which also is one of the important part that how temple building activities evolved in this country so the sacrifice sacrificial ritual around the altar performed by the priest i mean here you can see a photo of a, a, a very old photograph indeed from a, a specific fire ritual which is known as agni chayana sanskar which used to happen i mean the last reported uh, ritual which happened was in 1996 in kerala nowadays i don't know if these practices are being done because due to n number of factors and the finances needed for this and we have a long you know history i mean we have we are seeing a lot of challenges all through the people are not keen to practice you know what their forefathers used to do so this is a picture of a agni uh, chayana ritual and you can see the altar very well you can see the design of bricks so a lot of scholar believes that you know that the practice of fire ritual actually paved the way for temple construction the design for the bricks of various sizes there are triangles there are squares there are rectangles i hope a lot of people who are from archaeology background they remember that what sort of sizes of bricks were there in indus valley civilization so this particular thing gave a pace to the temple you know the temple construction activities and the very thing which evolved from this particular fire ritual was the vastu purush mandal on which i won't be going much into uh, uh, in 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 the great detail right now because a lot of people are aware of vastu shastra these days because whenever you go and buy some their new property these days vastu and feng shui are two you know some fancy terms which are being even taught in the architecture college because it makes you uh, it make it actually helps you uh make to sustain in the you know the following market right now so this is the you know the reality of the uh, i would say the architectural education in the country right now and you know the, the vastu purush mandal is based for everything i mean it's it's like a square which on which you know you plan everything and you know everything has to be you know uh, you know uh, envisaged around that particular you know plan which is which actually imagine uh, originates from this particular uh, ritual of a fire ritual Uh, which you are seeing in the picture in, in, on your slide right now and then you know the the concept of devale slowly slowly started it was not that suddenly huge temples came into the picture always you know like we say in hindi like boon boon se ghada banta hai so it's like small small steps with which you know you conceive something bigger in the later part of the history so historically as it is said i mean there could have been temples a lot of people believe that they were they could have been temples made up of maybe brick uh, made, made up of uh, maybe wood uh, which would have which have not sustained uh, due to the you know various uh, reasons like it's not uh, because they are the biodegradable uh, degradable materials but we do have some earliest specimens of temples uh, still in the country and guptas actually who ruled somewhere from 3rd century ce to 5th century ce almost in the northern part of the india just on the upper region of narmada were are considered to be the first dynasty to bring to build something 
which we call today as a full fledged temple in the indian context so just just for uh, just one clarification when i am talking about guptas it means that i am only talking about the northern region i mean uh, we we do have some sp some specimens in the in the southern part of the country but not something which actually goes nearby to this particular time period and the photograph what you are seeing right now is the first temple which was you know built of, of, of about, about which we will be discussing in uh, in in my course and this temple is known as temple number 17 and a lot of lot of people will be you know surprised to know that this particular temple sits very near to the great sanchi stoop the very the the the, the, the sanchi which used to be the sasural of ashoka and one of his wife was from that particular region the sanchi was one of the most important business center in the history of uh, of, of in indian history and a lot of people believe that this particular temple could be a buddhist temple but the fact as fact is that this particular temple actually gave the 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 footmark of you know how temples evolved in the later part of the history and also in the in the in the age of gupta dynasty so here on the left the the broken part you can see the first full fledged temple uh, in the history of uh, india which is known as dashavatara temple uh, and that particular than which you saw in previous slides a small shrine is actually located very near to this particular temple this was one of the first full fledged developed temples on the norms of you know how temples are were designed and planned in the indian uh, you know subcontinent and from this to what you are seeing on the right you can see the whole journey you know how things evolved from that part so on 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 this particular side you are seeing a time period from 3rd century ce till 9 to 10th century ce so there is a there is a period of 700 years you can see on this particular slide and in our course uh, as uh, you know you know that mostly when we study about temple architecture we have two two major important terms one is the nagar temple architecture when we talk about Nagar temple architecture, it's mostly the northern part of the India. When we got Dravid temple architecture, it's the southern part of the India. Also, we have some more, you know, uh, you know, some more classifications among both the two styles, of which uh, about which I will be discussing in the next slides. But right now, the most important focus for this course will be in the, on the Dravid and the Nagar part. So the Dravid part, you can see on your I mean, just above the indica course written that you can see all this, you know, small, small shrines bulging up to the main Kalasha. And on the left, you can see that uh, a, a typical, you know, uh, it, it is a sketch of the Kandariya Mahadev temple in Khajraho. And it is one of the important, you know, specimens of the Naga temple architecture. So we will be discussing about them in the course, obviously. And we will be also discussing about the various, you know, spaces, various i would say the terminologies because a lot of times i have seen that people go to the site and don't know how to conceive what they are saying in front of them the problem is that it's not their problem that they they, ha they have not been told the thing is that whatever has been written in the books have been so i would say you know hard it, it is so hard for the layman to read that he would not be able to go and read those you know moti moti books and you know grasp all that information so this course is particularly is an attempt to you know to i would say put some you know some uh, some 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 i would say ease to that uh, you know the heavy knowledge which is there in the books in the form of drawings and the photographs because visually people are able to connect much so these are the you know sketches which i have made for these courses there are many more you will see a lot more sketches uh, for the course i mean for the all 30 hours lecture what i have i will be taking from 15 march onwards these are just some specimens or I would say some things to lure, you know, the people who are, you know, right now sitting and attending this particular session. And yes, I mean, when we talk about the, uh, you know, the North Indian part of the Nagar, uh, you know, the, the architecture. So these were these are the important regions. There are many more. I mean, it, this map is not the final one. I mean, a lot has to be updated on this particular part. But these are the primary, you know, the, the major uh, dynasties of which we see a lot of contribution was was done on the aspect of temple architecture uh, specifically in the you know the in the northern part of this country and um, so you can see the guptas the kalchoris the famous gurjar pratiharas i mean who have temples all the way from rajasthan to the complete mp rajasthan you know all these places and even uh, in some places of uh, uh, uttar pradesh we have parmars 
the famous the famous text uh, of which i will be discussing in this course which is samrangan sutradhar it was written by the famous parmara king uh, raja bhoj and we have chandelas so we have chahamans i mean sorry the chahamans have been kept below but it is not uh, the the actual timeline chahamans are much you know our predecessor to the gujar pratihara so apologies for this particular arrangement right now on this slide and when obviously when we talk about the the, the dravid uh, uh, temple architecture we have these major dynasties uh, we have few more to add like kalyani chalukyas because chalukyas have very serious very territories uh, obviously uh, uh, we have hoysalas of which i have not mentioned here due to some reason because the architecture styles given by the hoysala is a different uh, you know topic altogether which i have you know termed which most of the scholar termed as the vaisara style of temple architecture which is a, a separate you know module of this course because when we talk about the karnataka tradition it has a very different style altogether like what you see in tamil nadu so i don't want to mix these two things with each other because they do they do have a different you know arena of each other and i wanted to respect both of these you know uh, dynasties in, in my particular you know the, the this course for the indic academy so yes you know we will be discussing about a lot of plans like you know what is sandhar sandhar is something which doesn't has uh, uh, you know the, the pradakshina path nirandhar has a pradakshina path and we have different sort of plans you know all this sort all this we will be discussing there are you know various uh, complex you know geometries uh, which we will be discussing in terms of various you know temple styles across the nation then also you know we have a lot of you know uh, name for the various spaces like you know Uh, we have a uh, why garbhagraha is called garbhagraha where actually garbhagraha is what all comes before the garbhagraha what is antaral what is sabha mandap what is mukha mandap you know all these basic terminology when a person the idea is that when a person attends this course and goes to a site he should have an idea you know that what particular space he is seeing and in case a lot of time what happens that you know you are not able to see a complete uh, you know temple which was built that point of time because due to n number of recent temples have you know faced a lot of lot of things maybe due to the natural calamity or maybe due to destruction a lot of spaces are not there but even also after seeing our, even after seeing the plan one can you know easily uh, you know get through the very idea that what actually this, this space was okay this was because this is com coming between the sabha mandap and the garbhagriha this is antaral this is coming somewhere after the sabha mandap this is mukha mandap so you know all this understanding you know very basic things Uh, is the very you know uh, i would say the idea that you know where a person should be learning and he should be you know taking something from this course after you know attending this hectic you know i would say 30 hours because i know that uh, 30 hours won't be an easy thing because a lot of people uh, did complain that you know the course is extensive but the point is that if you have to study something uh, of this very country which you know has a range of some i would say 1500 years i mean 30 30 hours is you know we, you won't be able to uh, touch the tip of the iceberg so you know just be prepare i mean it will be a very interactive uh, thing to uh, you know go, go as an architect i cannot you know uh, assume to not to have any sort of drawing because it will be like a a, a light like a thutu on my face that as an architect i am not using drawings to you know convey the very idea how these temples were built and you know what all philosophies were embedded when the when the craftsmen that point of time were building those temples so yes i mean i am specifically right now only discussing about the nagar part in just you know, just for a go through so we will discuss about various forms in nagar uh, we we also have various forms in different different styles like in uh, kalinga nagar shaili uh, which is specifically for the odisha or the region of odisha here you can see the latin nagar and the bhumij nagar i won't be going into the principles how these things uh, actually evolved but yes in the in, in the course you will be learning about all those things uh, also the shekri thing which is the most common i would say uh, temple shekhar which is being used in spe specifically in the northern part of the country a lot of the people who are aware of the ram janam bhumi plan if they have that picture in their mind the same shekhar is being used for that particular temple also because sompuras have built uh, the, the the style on which that particular temple is be, is being built is basically the nagar uh, temple architecture style but it has a lot of influence from a group of architects who evolved from the region of uh, gujarat which are known as sompuras and sompuras have used nagar uh, the shekhari nagar style tremendously in the course of the history 
also we will be discussing about the kalinga nagar uh, architecture as i told you i mean it has a lot of uh, you know a lot of people are not aware of the beautiful temples which are lying there in odisha and i had a privilege to visit this particular you know state uh, not extensively but at least i have visited some very important sites so i will be sharing uh, the photographs and mind it i mean the photographs what i am sharing right now are all from my own travel i hardly use the pictures from anyone else because mostly i have been traveling extensively from past 6 7 years and i have the camera with me every time so all the photographs mostly what you are seeing are from my own camera and uh, obviously the the karnataka tradition we will be talking about extensively about the hoysala architecture i mean how you know because hoysalas are considered to be the mastermind in terms of mathematics the way they have planned the temples i mean on that to on the most hardest material available on this planet that is granite is something worth you know studying and uh, i think soon these temples will be in the list of unesco world heritage site so this course is a good opportunity to understand these things uh, after like if you go to this site so you have will have an idea you know with what particular uh, you know i would say uh extra you know uh, important things which you will be for which you can focus when you visit these temples and the most important part of this course would be that you know that mostly what happened that uh, from 12th century uh, uh, what happened that we don't see a major temple construction activity hap happening anywhere in the northern in the in the major part of the country because due to the islamic invasion a lot of temples were you know vandalized and this actually gave a pause for a period of some few years but suddenly uh, you know after some political uh, i would say some stability and also due to some political alliances uh, a lot of temples came into the region uh, especially uh, in the period of i would say 16th uh, 15 16 to 17th century and these temples were not traditionally on the principles of temple architecture but they were they are one of the important contributions to the uh, you know the the larger umbrella of indian temple architecture the photo what you are seeing in right, in right now in front of me is the govindev temple which was built by maharaja man singh the great kachwaha ruler in 1590 that to in brindavan and this particular temple was funded by in the, by akbar the importance of this temple is this, this is the first non royal mohal building for which the red sandstone were sanctioned from the very quarry from which the stones were also used for fatehpur sikri so we will be talking about all these temples across the region i mean this is something which is there in north so we have something exact replica of this temple built by maharaja veer singh dev bundela in the famous temple town of orcha again the material is different the style is different we will discuss about you know all those things you know that how uh people try and replicate things in the limitation of what all they possess in their region because bundelkhand doesn't has red sandstone but still that didn't uh, stop maharaja veer singh bundela to construct this particular majestic temple uh, right in front of ramrada sarkar in orcha then we have the famous jagat shiromani temple in jaipur built in the same period of time and by by man singh and again you can see you know a lot of uh, similarities and dissimilarities between the region because we know jaipur has a lot of you know that white uh, sort of stone available and marble so you can see a lot of things you know coming into the picture we will be discussing about you know how material plays an important role why people tend to choose a particular material every time why not another one why are something different so these all questions will be answered you know uh, during the uh, when this course will take place i mean again terracotta temples of bengal we know that uh, the region of bengal is highly enriched by the by the mighty river ganga and its tributaries and that actually gives a reason that why we have a lot of you know alluvial soil uh, uh, you know available in that region and people were smart so they took the advantage of that soil and they baked these beautiful you know did uh, terracotta tiles and here you can see a beautiful you know examples uh, you know envisaged by the craftsmen there in in, in the in the undivided bengal So we will be discussing about this particular things also. You know how this also influenced a lot of buildings in the uh, in the Mughal uh, territory. The reason why I am more you know focused about the medieval part because I am 
a person who is very much you know dedicated to the architectural history of the Braj region. And when you study about the arch temple architecture of the Braj region, the whole you know nexus of Braj and Bengal is something very important to study. So this all I will be sharing with you in the you know due course in in the due time. And the most important thing is uh, my attempt will be there in one module to talk about the construction style. You know, mostly people have this idea, Are, kaise bana hoga? people have this debate, Are, we had dome or not. I mean, we had the arches or not, you know, all those things. What sort of span you, we used to achieve? Uh, what was the, you know, the height of the shikhar we used to achieve? You know, all these questions. But the point is that, you know, uh, just to compete with something which is not uh, indigenous to country, we, you know, uh, uh, make a lot of stupid claims. But the idea is to, you know, present the actual picture, you know, how these temples were constructed. I mean, here you can see a very beautiful example. They assembled the stones and above that, you can see the very beautifully dressed stones arranged on the temple. This is how this particular style is known as Latin Sheikh, uh, the Latin Nagar uh, temple, uh, temple style, which we will discuss. And this is, you know, how they were discussed. This, this is a temple in Chandpur near Devgarh. It belongs to 10th century C. Here you can see another different style. How to give the height? We, we make different, different compartments. Obviously, we will discuss this also in greater detail. I'm just saying, sharing some pictures, you know, what all this course will be about. And again, a different, uh, you know, arrangement altogether. This is in a place near Bateshwar, the various, the, the, the famous temple, which a lot of you would have seen, uh, you know, which were, you know, lying unattended and uh, famous archaeologist, uh, Mr. K.K. Muhammad went and, you know, restored a lot of temples in that particular site, despite the threat from the decoits uh, of that region. So this particular shikhar is over there. And here you can see that how that particular curvilinear, the circular, you know, shape of the shikhar is achieved by arranging the st stones in a manner that when they place the dress stones over there, over them, things are as circular as we see mostly uh, when, you know, the pictures are uh, what you see online most of the times. Another important part, uh, which I will be covering in this, you know, uh, lecture is the various components of temples. I mean, uh, most of the people are aware, I mean, a lot of books are there on temple architecture. People know that what this, this place is, what this particular part is. But, you know, uh, there is a way to decipher by seeing a particular component that what that particular, what that particular temple would have been, where this particular part was. So, for example, by seeing the size of Amalaka, this is known as Amalaka, which sits on the top of the Shekhar, we can easily decipher, you know, that what could have been the size of the Shekhara. By the size, I mean the height. Here you can see a specimen of a vatayan, what we call in English as window. I mean, a lot of people have the various, you know, fancy designs about the windows, but here we have a very traditional uh, specimen of windows and we have very ancient ones also, which were there in the uh, temples built by Gupta. So I will be discussing about all of them. Then, you know, we have this roofs, like you can see all this grooving, the geometrical patterns. Now, this particular roof can easily tell, you know, that what was the, the, the size of this shrine. So all these interesting things, you know, which mostly we tend to miss, we, we, which we mostly, you know, try not to, you know, think about. Uh, my, uh, you know, the idea would be to, you know, to make people think about, you know, that whenever they go next to a site which is lying in rubble, one should have an idea, you know, that yes, I mean, this could have been a picture. I mean, they could just create a picture maybe in their mind or maybe through the sketch or whatever means they can. But the purpose is that people should connect even from these stones lying on the land. I mean, these are not something which is, you know, just a, what we say in a, in a language like a kavada. I mean, these are some important, you know, like each and every stone has a rich history in a capsulized form. And this is what we will be deciphering. So here is a, you know, uh, I would say... Uh, uh, a, a timeline of you know what all topics I will be covering. As I told you in, in in the starting of my lecture, you know that why temples were conceived. I start. I, I gave you a, a basic gist of those things. There are many more things to discuss. Specifically, all these topics will be discussed in the reference of various scholars and historians who have dedicatedly worked uh, for the you know the this the massive. Uh, you know, I would say subject uh, which is called as Indian temple architecture. 
I mean, I we will be talking about the idea of Hindu temple, about which I just discussed in very briefly. Obviously, about the terminologies. Uh, the important part is that a lot of people, you know, ask that what are the texts uh, which use which were used uh, while these temples were constructed. So we have a, a a good you know list of those books which vary from region to region. I will try and convey those that list also in one of the modules in this course. Uh, planning principles, yes, being an architect, I cannot uh, you know hide away from this particular topic. I will be you know discussing about the, this particular thing. Geography, I mean, you saw a picture where a temple was sitting inside a jungle. Then we have we we have always been you know questioning that why when the flood occurred in Kedarnath, how come that temp that, that temple didn't submerge and and you know everything around a temple got you know submerged in the debris of the flood. So these are some questions which make us think you know that uh, how geography plays an important role. Uh, yesterday only one of my friend was saying that recently there has been a discovery of a great uh, a very huge lithium reserve in Jammu region and that is very near to uh, the Vishnu Devi temple. So a few of our friends were discussing and we were saying that, you know, that maybe that could be a reason that why our Shakti Peets were placed in a region where, you know, the energy was very high. And uh, maybe, you know, these things uh, could be wrong, could be right. But, you know, these are various ideas. But yes, geography has played a very important role in temples where they have been planned and where they have been, you know, envisaged. I mean, I have given you a gist of the Nagara style of temples. I mean, this would be something very interesting, the Nagara and Dravid style. Vesara is again, I mean, the Hosala, the Karnataka tradition, the, the Black Granite temples, which you see in the Karnataka region. I will be talking about that. The Kalinga style is the Odisha. I mean, the, the region from the, 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 the temples which are in the Odisha. We have various styles, various shikras to be discussed, um, various shapes of the temples, which are very, very interesting and very intriguing to understand, which is very interesting to understand. A lot of people would love to, you know, know about them. Apart from them, I would be, as I, which is, I mean, I, I have not mentioned these things, uh, these, those headings in this particular, you know, slide, but obviously we will be discussing about the medieval temples from 15th century to 17th century onwards. And uh, there will be a small, you know, introduction to uh, the, the Kalyani Chalukya style, uh, which is a part of uh, the Karnataka tradition. And um, also the arts and crafts, which are related to the temple, temple architecture. We have a lot of, you know, text, we have a lot of uh, interesting, you know, researches and papers which talks about specific craftsmen with specific sculptor or specific sthapati who is building temple around that region who has his name inscribed on that particular, you know, uh, temple. I mean, we will be taking some examples in that particular module. And as I told you that Hindu temples in the medieval and modern time. So this will be a major, you know, I would say, uh, uh, a, a timeline i mean again i mean there will be a few adjustments i will see accordingly but yes this will be a i would say a, a mota picture to understand you know that what uh, the course would be and um, so i would just like to you know end this particular uh, uh, overview online overview with one of the you know beautiful shlok which is one of my favorite shlok from atharaveda which says that uchishthe <clears throat> naam rupam Chochishthe lok ahitah, Uchishtha indraschaganishchah, Vishwamanta samahitam, Uchishthe dava prithvih, Bhutam samahitam, Apaha samudra uchishthe, Chandrama vata ahitah. The shlok means the name and form are in the residue. The world is in the residue. Indra and Agni are also in residue. The, the universe itself is in residue. Heaven, earth, all existence is in the residue. The water, the ocean, the moon, and the wind are also in the residue. And so does this humble attempt in form of this course for the seekers and for the sadhakas is the residue left behind by the marvelous scholars and the historians who have dedicated their life for the study of Indian temple architecture. I am just a small limit to transfer that knowledge to all your people. Beyond that, I am nothing. Thank you. Tushantir Bhavato. Thank you so much, Sushanji. That was really insightful. And uh, now we uh, reach the Q&A section of this particular uh, webinar today. Uh, there are a few questions that were posted in the Q&A box that I've already answered. A few questions uh, that I, I did not want to answer and I uh, and probably I could not answer, I put there. And then we have two attendees who have raised their hands. Uh, uh, once the Q&A box uh, questions are answered, we will invite Pushpaji and 
uh, Vrindavan Chandra Das Ji uh, to, uh, you know, unmute their microphone and speak. But for now, we'll take up these questions in the Q&A box. And thereafter, if any uh, other audience member wants to either post their question in the Q&A box or raise their hand and speak up, please feel free to do so. So uh, there is one question um, by an anonymous attendee and they ask, will terminologies used in South temples be used as well? Yes, I mean, when I, when I am saying, when I'm, when I've already, you know, segregated the course into Dravid and Nagar. So I will be talking about some terminologies in the Dravid uh, temple style also. I mean, they are not something very different. I mean, but we have some few specific terms which are, you know, specifically used in that region. So that will be discussed, obviously, when I will be, you know, specifically taking the Dravid uh, temple style. I mean, I want to be, you know, having any sort of differentiation between the North and South. <laughs> Wonderful. So there is uh, an observation by uh, Dr. Umesh Prasad ji. Uh, he appreciates your presentation and documentation. He says that the coverage, this is his impression, uh, the coverage lacks the temples of Odisha and Assam. So would you be covering temples uh, yeah, from... I shared, I shared one picture of the famous, uh, you know, temple in Odisha. And also there was there in the last slide, I specifically mentioned the Kalinga Nagar style. So I will be talking about the Risa region. Yes, I mean, uh, when I talk about the medieval temples, I will be in that, I will be co covering the, I mean, because the point is that if the umbrella under the medieval era is too large, so I don't think so, I would be able to, you know, do, do justice to each and every region. So because that is a specific region, I will be talking about where I have a certain understanding and expertise. So for this, I would be, you know, I would be uh, giving an apology that I won't be going to that region. But in case, if if things are there, we may include that. I mean, that won't be an issue for me. So, Umesh ji, I would really welcome you to enroll into this course. And uh, I'm sure you will realize that this overview is just a very small snapshot of what it has to offer. 30 hours uh, of very thought through curriculum has been put forth for uh, learners, especially like you. So Ajay Dagarji says he is very excited. He was looking forward to such course. Deogar temple is uh, of what style I visited this temple. So what is the style of the Deogar temple that uh, Ajay ji has visited? Which Deogar temple he is saying? I don't know. That he has not mentioned. So probably he can ask this question in yeah. class directly. <laughs> because maybe he would be talking about Devgar in Jharkhand. So it is a different thing altogether. I was talking about different Devgar, which is near Lalitpur. Just okay. to clarify. Understood. So Karte Khandwala ji asks, will you be going into the details of the temples of the Braj region other than Govindji temple? Yes, yes, I will. I will because this, this is something which is very near to my heart. So, and also I'm working on a manuscript on the temple architecture of Braj region. So yes, I will be going into that. Wonderful. Uh, then... Uh, Okay, Anjan Nandi ji has uh, uh, commented, being a practicing architect, the session has given me more insight to go through the details of temple architecture design, thanks to uh, Sushan ji, especially, and the organizer. Uh, Anjan ji, uh, you are a practicing architect. Thank you so much. Uh, see, our faculty is creme de la creme, so like, it's not just for this course, but for all courses. So I would urge you to definitely uh, enroll into the program. I'm sure there must be more that uh, you will gain by the live interaction that happens in the live sessions. And probably there might be more food for thought and more ideas also. So thank you. Uh, any book available uh, on any book available in temperature temple? I don't know what this means. Probably he means to ask Jagdish Ji, my guess that you want to ask about temple architecture, any book available? There are a plethora of books available. Would you recommend any, Sushant? Yeah, there are many. And the point is that uh, I would like to connect one more thing, which I was discussing with Dimple the other day that, you know, a lot of people are complaining about the price of this course. So I would like to bring this particular thing right now because a lot of books of which I will be taking name are something which will make you some which will charge you around some 5k, 7k. And also there is a set on temple architecture specifically, which was done by the various fam very famous M.A. Dhaki Saab. And it's a volume of 14 books and cost 50k. So mind it, I mean, I have spent all this amount savings from my, you know, bachelors and masters. And that is all, you know, I will be giving to you. So there are various books. The most important book is the, the Hindu Temple by Stella Cambridge. It's a two volume book. Uh, it's not that expensive, I believe. I mean, uh, because these are printed from the foreign publishers, so because what USD say 
INR karne mein it becomes expensive. But this is a book which each and every person should have. It's a book. And I just want to say one more thing that, you know, it has been a, I would say, irony that uh, a lot of Western scholars have, you know, worked very beautifully on these temples. Uh, then being uh, Indian scholars. I don't know what would, what, what was the reason. But yes, I mean, this has been a thing which I have, you know, discovered in the course of, you know, my own journey when I was, you know, reading about temples. And Stella Cambridge was one of the pioneer in this field who has, you know, contributed tremendously in the terms of uh, temple architecture. architecture. This is a book. And there are various books by Adam Hardy. I mean, you just put his name, you will get a number of PDFs online. I mean, these are two books. Uh, why I'm recommending Adam Hardy? Because he's an architect. Again, dealing about temples. So as an architect, I'm very near to him. And so these are two books, you know, you can just go through uh, for your study. Thanks, Sushanji. Karthik ji asks, will there be any homework as part of this course? Will there, will there be any course materials provided? For the second one, let me answer. Uh, all the live sessions are recorded and the recordings are made available on the learning portal. The presentations that are used by the faculty are also made available there for your perusal. And any reading material that the faculty provides will be made available there. Would you like to answer the homework part, Sushanji? Yeah, I mean, the homework part, uh, I think... Uh... I would uh, go with a very, a very, you know, small, I would exercise, or maybe it could be a form of a quiz or something like that, but there would be something very, very light. I mean, it won't be that much. Most heavy. importantly, yeah. I think you will definitely ask them to go to a local temple and try yes. and identify the style that that would be also a test of their learning. I mean, that uh, would be, uh, I would say a good, uh, you know, Guru Dakshana for me that if a person goes after, you know, attending this course and able to understand that what that particular temple was. There is something, it's like, you know, the purpose has been solved. I mean, what's it though? Yeah. So then there is a, a one observation by an uh, anonymous uh, attendee. This uh, They're uh, highlighting that the Indian map has borders marked wrongly. So I think uh, Sushanji has already spoken about, you know, some issues yes. in the map. He will definitely, the maps that will be used in the class will be definitely up to date. Uh, then... Uh, he says, uh, okay, now this is, uh, uh, dear anonymous attendee, uh, and there, I don't know if this it's the same anonymous attendee or multiple people are just being, uh, are posting questions anonymously. A uh, couple of questions, you know, uh, please understand the sanctity of this webinar and what is the purpose of this and please post questions accordingly. However, we will take whatever is there. Uh, there's one question, uh, are there any non-architectural temples uh, by people that were done by random but later became an epic? I really don't know what to make. able to understand this question because, I mean, uh, we didn't used to have a BR course way back then. A lot of people, if you go by the Renaissance age in Europe, Michelangelo was a painter and a sculptor and an architect, everything. So that has been the history in this country also. So we cannot say that he full-fledged architect the or painter the. Whatever they were, they have built something beautiful, which we are, you know, learning about. परंतु उस समय का जो शास्त्र था, उसके अनुसार वो बनाते थे. तो ये बीआर को एमआर डिग्रीज नहीं थी. परंतु उस समय भी शिल्पकार होते थे. उस समय भी ऐसे ही लोग होते थे. जो हर किसी different art and craft में, for example, not everybody had to have an MFA to become a fine arts professional or something. So perhaps anonymous attendee ji and other kind folks who are here. Please do try and elaborate on what it is that you're asking so that we are able to serve you better. Uh, there is, uh, okay, it will be nice to include the Jagannath Temple of Puri. Is the Jagannath Temple uh, included? Yes, I mean, when I'm talking about the Kalhanga Temple, yeah, style, exactly. can I leave, leave Lingaraj and Puri Temple? I mean, it is, I mean, it is not practically possible for me to do so. Then there is uh, one more uh, question, uh, which is... Uh, now, uh, again, Agaram uh, uh, Srinivasan ji says, uh, I am interested and I'm intrigued that you did not share a single picture of temples of Tamil Nadu and Kerala, which are significantly more. I started saying this in starting that uh, right now for this overview, I am only using the Naga style. I said that in starting, you can just go through the recording. I am, you know, I apologize for the same because I had a limitation, a time period to, you know, discuss for this particular overview. That's why I was not able to include the David, uh, David, uh, you know, the style in this particular, over, uh, 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 you know, overview right now. But yes, uh, I will be giving my humble respects to the style uh, during this course. And if you enroll, you will be happy to, you know, see my approach that how I will be, I will be dealing with them and also with the different states like Karnataka, Andhra and other states in South. 
so that you know be assured about that so uh, now uh, now there is a question by uh, dr aruna uh, aruna ji says uh, that i'm really interested in knowing about uh, mandirs but i don't have an architectural background so is it okay to enroll for this course yes i mean uh, i told you i mean the idea is to be very very you know sublime in the approach i mean no heavy terms and uh, it's just you know to give a basic idea that if you are saying something i mean what does it mean everything has a meaning nothing came without a meaning so this is the whole idea i mean if you don't have a background i mean it's all fine i mean i don't want someone from a ba degree because already a lot of people who have a ba degree are not doing anything in this field so better not to have one <laughs> so then we have uh... okay purushottam reddy ji wants the two books information mentioned by the speaker to be put in the chat box uh, uh, you could just uh... do you want could you just send me the or we'll do one thing one second purushottam reddy ji why don't you just uh, send us a uh, an email uh, at reachoutatendika.com i'll put it in a response to question just one more thing i mean uh, in that particular uh, you know uh, uh, the if you go to the website on indie course and if you just click my this particular yes. course yes. i have given the list of you know readings so you can see these two names already over there So Purushottam ji, uh, kindly go to the enrollment link, click on it, and in the details you will see it. Good to have some homework. Yes, Karthik ji, thank you. Uh, then uh, we have thanks uh, from Jagdish ji. Uh, thank you so much, Jagdish ji. Uh, so uh, then I am in US and would like to know the time is seven p.m. IST on every Wednesday, uh, beginning the fifteenth of March, Balwan ji. And uh, for the um, uh, understanding and information of the audience members at large, uh, we have students from uh, more than twenty countries enrolled in Indica courses. because we make the recordings available so even if there's a time zone mismatch students are able to attend asynchronously and because the learning portal has a discussion forum and there's a structured uh, you know uh, infra in place so any queries can be posted in there and can be responded to by the faculty so uh, you know even if you're not able to attend the live sessions you can still participate vicariously then uh, we have okay uh, uh then uh, okay sonia gandhi ji asks what are the bases i have to learn in this architecture i think uh, sonia ji why don't you uh, drop us an email at reachoutatendika.courses so that we are able to respond to you better would you be covering the terracotta tile temples of bengal sushant ji yes i mean i won't be going to great detail because i told you that particular that that time period 15th to 16th century is quite humongous i mean i have a limited you know time uh, for this particular course uh, to take and uh, i will just be you know going touch and go sort of thing for terracotta but yes i will be including them i the, the photo was shared in the overview okay one second uh, then uh, we have uh, there is another call uh, there's another question by another anonymous attendee or maybe the same one uh, uh, they ask will the course include traditional urban planning or town planning schemes if not please consider that idea for future uh, may i answer this sushant ji first and yes, then you can yes, ask to yes, it yes, this yes, particular yes. course is meant only for um, uh, temple architecture uh, we have an ongoing uh, course uh, on vastu which you uh, i i see a lot of architects already enrolled uh, in this webinar so probably you could have a look at indica.courses and i'll share the link of the vastu course here and we are uh, uh, you know keen on uh, curating a course on traditional urban planning and town planning but that will be a separate one probably with sushant ji or with some other architect or uh, as subject matter expert but this one i i i believe and i would like to assure you is largely focused on temple architecture sushant ji do you have anything to add to yes it? i think i will be going with the same idea what you have just shared because you know as i told you that 30 hours is very very less i mean i could have gone for a year long course with very extensive you know like a online uh, thing but obviously we have a limitation so i don't think so i will be able to you know put some light on that particular aspect maybe in the near future maybe uh now there's a question by advocate vivek garg ji he says i'm ancient historian and archaeologist by degree and writings i'm in my 40s also very passionate to be a temple architect will this course give me enough opportunities to work under an architect and intact to learn further in this domain and become a professional temple architect 
I would like to step in and say that this is just an initiation to whet your curiosity and help you go further into the stream. And of course, then, uh, you know, like with Sushanji's guidance and, you know, once you get into the whole field and you get into the research, we who knows what might unfold. Sushanji, what, what's your answer? Yes, I mean, I told, I mean, temple uh, construction activities have been a sadhana in this country. It's not like a typical, you know, job what we do in today's time. And um, if you have to, you know, specifically go into this particular detail, after you know getting some idea from this course then i have few names to suggest, suggest where you can go and learn things from the people who are right now building temples on the traditional aspect how their ancestors built some thousand years ago but uh, this course will be just a just an understanding to understand you know what the temple architecture is there in india so i won't be giving some uh, you know some political vada saying that you will be able to construct temples after uh, attending this but yes you might be able to understand the drawings uh, that how these temples were built. Yeah. Okay. Then we have a question by uh, Vamshi Bandaruji. He says he's an architect by training, uh, but not a practicing one. Uh, he wants to understand how beginner level is this course uh, compared to what is taught in the first and second years in BRC. I think Vamshi should know that what all I will be covering in this particular course is something far beyond what is taught in the colleges in, in India. I know the history of architecture syllabus very well, what is being taught in the architecture colleges. It has a lot of Europe, a lot of everything. So it will be far, far beyond, you know, what is being taught. So maybe you would be able to put some light in your colleges after attending this. Okay, so now I, I will not be taking any Q&A text box questions first because we have four attendees who've been, I think, uh, uh, Vivek Garchi, we have already taken your question, so I'm lowering your hand for now. But if you have a different question to ask or a different comment, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, Push Pushpa KG, uh, please uh, uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask what it is that you wish to ask, please. Pushpa ji, are you there? I have moved you to the panelist uh, group so that you can ask your question. I think you have raised your hand inadvertently so I am so I will uh, now I will uh, move Vrindavan, uh, Vrindavan Chandra Das ji uh, please unmute yourself and ask your question yeah, am I audible? yes sir Namaskar thank you very much uh, Indika for again uh, attending this uh, uh, and the very good place that you are doing this work. Uh, my question to Susanji is that uh, uh, you know how the Indian traditional knowledge systems used to work, Guru Shishya Paramahara, or the descending kind of way of getting the knowledge, uh, and uh, you know the, how the modern structures. Uh, work. Could you be a bit louder? I am not able to hear actually what all you are saying. Yeah, my question is that I am audible now better. Yes, I mean, a, a, a bit better, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Or uncha bol sakte or uncha agar ho mere liye bhi. Yeah. My question is that, that the traditional way of knowing all the knowledge, like Sripa Sastra, Ayurveda, the Indic knowledge traditions were like, like having a Guru Shishya Parampara, you know, uh, having a Guru and a disciple getting knowledge, and that was like a descending way of learning knowledge, and the modern university kind of knowledge, ascending way of learning knowledge, reading books and having professors and like that. So uh, in your background, I mean, uh, from the webinar that you gave, I'm understanding that, you, uh, you know, you, you mentioned like that uh, the temple construction is like a sadhana. So that's more of a, you uh, know, like Guru Shishya Parampara uh, of understanding it. So uh, how much your knowledge is, you know, from the tradition of uh, Guru Shishya Parampara and how much is of the modern way of learning it? Because I saw both sides of it in a webinar. Like you are asking that have I have been studied temple architecture under Guru Shishya Parampara. Is this a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I am not a traditional sthapati. Uh, let me be very clear. I mean, we have, I told uh, in another question that we have a lot of, you know, sthapatis working in India, specifically in north, in the southern part of this country. And also in the western part, when I talk about the Sompuras. So we have some traditional, you know, families who have been building temples from thousand years. 
So I have not studied, uh, you know, temple architecture or sthapatya, mandir sthapatya in the temple. I am more towards the academic part of the temples, like how to decipher them while seeing. I mean, I am not uh, one who can, uh, whom you can ask uh, to build a temple. I mean, that is not uh, my, I mean, that is not my job altogether. But yes, if someone is doing so, I can easily understand that what he is about to do. What are he, what will be his, you know, steps, what steps he will be taking, what sort of, you know, Shikhara will be there by seeing the base. These all things I can easily decipher. Yes. So isn't it that the traditional way of learning through those traditional families would be uh, giving a much more clearer and, you know, uh, better knowledge also instead of going through academic, academic style that you are working now? I, I would like to I would like to interject here. Uh, this is a question for Indeka, not for Sushanji. Indavanji uh, at Indeka courses for now we are largely looking at uh, bringing forth themes uh, in an academic manner uh, for people who might not necessarily be professionals but are enthusiasts and want to understand something. What you're proposing is that course would be more in the technical nature wherein people who are keen on getting into that domain or a profession would like to do. This is a course which takes people and initiates them into what a temple is all about. It is not just a building because currently, uh, due to whatever uh, is the environment, and I don't want to uh, you know delve into that, uh, a lot of devotees even who are regular temple goers are not even sensitized to the sanctity of that space, uh, the demarcation, what does this mean, What what is the vigraha signifying, because we are not currently being raised in the Hindu tradition as children. So yes, even if kids go to the temple, the elders are not able to tell them things about it. So this is the first step uh, in the temple series. We've already organized two batches of temple management in Agama Shastras. So that was again to, you know, let them understand how were temples managed, like there was a proper system to it. This is the second step in the series, temple architecture and art. When you go to the temple, where is that energy field? What are you looking at? Why do you feel a certain way? So, and what are the different styles? And even if there are different styles, there is a commonality. So for a Hindu in any part of India, the temple largely will have these parts and you might call it something else in your regional name and all, but there is that unifying thing. So the intent of this course is very different. What you're suggesting is a very welcome recommendation. And in fact, I uh, urge all the audience members here or anybody who watches this video later, if there are any other such courses or subjects in the indigenous knowledge systems domain that come to your mind and which you believe Indica should offer, please feel free to mail us your recommendations at reachout.indica.courses. We will do our utmost to identify the best subject matter expert in that field and present that course for you. However, one more, um, you know, uh, a concern uh, with you, Vrindavanji, since you've been so authentic and very, uh, uh, you know, gracious in giving this recommendation is that uh, we are, uh, uh, Indica Courses is a for-profit for Indica, which is a not-for-profit. Our intent is to start making some money so that we can plow it back into the organization, Indica, which is doing so much work across so many streams. What happens is it's not feasible for us to have courses across myriad themes at the same time. It's not possible because even, for example, in this overview webinar, there are nearly 400 people who have enrolled for this webinar. More than 80 people attended this webinar today, uh, you know, at one time, and there's still people coming and going. But when we look at enrollment, we see people shirking. Sure. So... As, as somebody who's running an edtech enterprise for a not-for-profit and in the capacity of a servant leader, I have to look at a lot of other things too. Perhaps this is not the right forum to discuss it, but since you are, I know, a very encouraging, uh, uh, you know, a learner and you've been a very, very uh, inspiring. Also, I, I do remember interacting with you in the earlier session, so I'm taking this liberty of being a little candid with you. So yes, there are, at this point of time, in my list, I have right now have 100 things that I, I would want to run courses on. 100 themes, is, I'm not joking. But identifying the right people, number one, and then having the audience that, you know, uh, would like to enroll. Because I see people very interested in coming and spending an hour. But when you have to take that next step, very few people come in. And then 
I, I am running a loss making enterprise in the end. How am I serving my parent organization in that? Sense? Our, our, our wish and desire is that because we are putting forth very differently curated courses, we want people to come and benefit because we offer scholarships and grants only for this intent that we want people to come and enroll. What is happening is that we bring out courses with a zeal, but we don't see people enrolling. So then this is a great recommendation. I will add it to my already 100 themes. The day it happens, we will again have an overview webinar for that. But just to highlight that this is an academic program, uh, we identified this young scholar bases his academic and professional credentials and his passion in a particular field. And uh, it's meant for a different set of audience. The course that you're recommending, we will definitely try and offer if it's possible because the sthapatis also may not be able to conduct this kind of a program. So there's a lot of, there's a lot that happens. Wonderful feedback. I accept it with gratitude and I'll definitely pack it in whenever we are able to offer it. You will be informed for sure. Thank you so much, Rindavanji. There are two more guests waiting, so I will have to move you right now back. No, no. Thank you, sir. So now I uh, I am uh, requesting Aditya Gargilji. Uh, Aditya ji, uh, could you unmute your microphone and ask your question, please? Aditya ji? Uh, you're not audible uh, at our end, Aditya ji. Uh, could you check if... And while Aditya ji uh, fixes his uh, microphone, we will uh, invite Surendra ji. Surendra ji, could you please unmute your uh, microphone and uh, ask your question? Or have you... Surendra ji, are you there? Yes. Yes, could please ask your I question. Could now guess it. My question is simple. Will you deal with the technical aspects of temple making like Ayadi for temple? Because in houses, there are only eight types. But in temple, more than 14 types. My question is simple because I am a Vastu consultant and I am unable to make a temple as Sthapatis does it. Will it be helpful? Uh, so, Indraji, your question is connected to the Vrindavan Chandra Dasji's question uh, because these are very technical things. I do know, but I won't be able to, you know, take this topic in this particular course because this course has been designed in a different manner altogether. This particular topic about which you are talking about the various forms and various spans of the temples is a different topic altogether. It needs a people with specific, you know, understanding. Not everyone would be able to understand this. So humbly, I would like to say that for this particular course, I won't be taking you know this particular topic about which you have discussed. Maybe in the near future, specifically for this particular thing, uh, just to you know uh, help people like you and the architects who are in the industry who want to do something you know something positive uh, for the near future. Thank you. So thank in you. fact, I, thank you, Surendra ji. In fact, uh, uh, Surendra ji and other like-minded learners like him. If you are keen, if there's a cohort that approaches us at Reach Out in Indica courses, say 15, 20 folks who say that they are keen to have this course, we would be happy to curate it for them. But in that case, we would need a minimum number of learners to approach us so that, you know, it becomes a, these are paid courses and uh, we have, there's a remuneration for the faculty too. So uh, if a minimum number of uh, learners approach us, we will try our level best to find the right subject matter expert for that particular course too. Uh, we have, Aditya ji has still raised his hand. I'm uh, again inviting him to the panel. Let's see if, uh, Aditya ji. No, it's not working. Apologies, Aditya ji. Could you please just put your question in the chat box? Uh, we, are, we are at 610. Ajay Dhagat ji, I am moving you to the panelist link. Please, yes, please ask your question, sir. And do keep it short at 6-9 already. So I have... My, my, yeah. my, my question is very simple. Will you yes, cover sir. the Badami, Badami temples? <laughs> uh, Ajay ji, I, I actually, I again repeating the same thing that uh, uh, I told in the starting itself that... Uh, I know. I know, but would you cut Badami temples? Um, it, it will be a very interesting subject. Yes, I mean, about. sir, I, what I'm saying that, uh, you know, for this particular um, overview, I only stick my PPTs for the northern part. I cannot leave Badami, I cannot leave Mahabali Puram, I cannot leave Rideshwara 
when i talk about the dravid uh, you know style so these thank all you. will thank be covered you. thank you thank you yes thank you uh, thank you ajay ji i am now moving you back to the audience uh, at this uh, so now i will go to the questions in the q and a box okay uh, kiran naik ji asks wish there will there i think they want to say will there be a detailed course on temple iconography from indica in future will you be covering a bit of iconography in your course sushant ji a bit a bit because uh, when we talk about the edicules around the temples so we have a specific you know arrangement and in that particular arrangement we have a certain set of deities which are placed like the um, the eight guardian deities of various directions so i will touch upon a few like how things are there on the lintel how to judge that who is there the presiding deity in the temple after seeing the lintel so a basic but not in a detail like you know how a temple like how should be an iconographic sh course should be so again you know it requires a different uh, course all together to study and to understand <laughs> wonderful but i would agree that these two things are interlinked i agree to this particular you know thing yeah ha huh, okay so uh, again uh, everybody wants to know the name of the books again so would you like to repeat the names again sushant ji i am again i am repeating the first name is the hindu temple it's a two volume book by stella cramrish just put stella hindu temple you will get the result another one are from some two three books by mr adam hardy you will get them uh, i i mean there are various names one is the indian temple architecture by adam hardy another one is the medieval temples of uh, india by adam hardy so there are various by adam hardy sir and this again you won't be able to buy because they are very expensive and some are out of print but yes you will be able to find the pdfs easily i mean i cannot uh, circulate them it will be a problematic issue but uh, e easily available Uh, and uh, also are there are also some libraries maybe around you which have these books so yes i mean there are many more in the course heading when you will click on the indica course you will find a lot of readings there below so i mean a lot is there i mean up to you what all you want to read so now that uh, the badami temple and all of this came into <laughs> uh you know that subject came up and i just wanted to share that indica uh keeps publishing uh work by scholars from time to time uh there is a book on temple management in agamas by dr deepa dorai swami that indica published i would urge you to look up that book you will find it highly beneficial and there's the beautiful labor of love on pallavas and chalukyas coptician in stone this is a coffee table book that indica published it's by gurpreet chopra and bharat uh, this is a book that uh, the architects and those who are especially interested in temple architecture would like so uh, the second book that i mentioned is pallavas and chalukyas coptician in stone by gurpreet chopra and bharat so these two books uh, related to temple we've already curated a course on temple management in agmas which was based on that book and we now have the course by sushant ji on uh, uh, temple architecture i think uh, 613 uh, is a good enough indication for us to kind of wind up uh, i would like to remind the audience members that uh, if any query of yours related to the course or the webinar could not get addressed uh, in this limited time frame please feel free to email us at reachout@indica.courses and we shall get back to you my team uh, checks it and responds at least within 72 hours uh, from monday to saturday you can write to us any day you can even send a mail on sunday but we will be able to respond only on the next working day that's one second is that the recording of this particular webinar will also be po posted on youtube channel of indic academy and we will mail you this webinar recording as also the enrollment link of this course my fervent hope desire and prayer is that most of you do enroll into this course it would be an encouragement to us it would be an encouragement to sushant and it would also be a, a firing of that interest that you have let your curiosity move into the zone of research so that perhaps tomorrow you will be able to inspire more people and even if you don't inspire them to enroll into a program at least when you go to the temple or when you talk about the temple you can talk with more authority and 
as an educated Hindu, not just as a believer, though it doesn't matter as a believing Hindu also, that's fine. But if you know it, you will be able to appreciate it more, perhaps that's one. Second, uh, this is a 30 hours program. And therefore, uh, we have uh, the uh, course is priced at 5000 rupees. Please note that this is lower than our standard price. In any case, we offer scholarships and grants for those who are in financial need. So please feel free to mail us. Uh, if you visit our website, indica.courses, there is a section on various programs that we have. Like we have an Evolve with Indica grant. We have Spy and Buddha scholarship and so on and so forth. So peruse those programs and see whichever is applicable to you and write to us. And we'll be able, uh, you know, able to help you with a discount too. That's there. Third, if you are unable to enroll into this program for some reason, please feel free to gift it to people who might find relevance here. And uh, please feel free to share the enrollment link of this course or even the overview webinar link. Uh, the idea is to increase the Indica courses community. We have a lot of courses. There's a Vastu course going on, which might be of interest to ad uh, architects here. We have courses on the law of karma. Sharda Lippi is a free course. So what prevents you if you're interested in IKS, please find what vibes with you on our website and feel free to enroll and write to us for any queries that you might have. We also have a self-paced, which is a pre-recorded course uh, that you can produce at your own uh, you know, leisure. You don't have to wait for anybody else. It's, it's a course on rituals and uh, mental well-being and exploring the scientific connection. So you can enroll into that too. Uh, we have one comment adam hardy book can be downloadable okay yes. i am um, i that's if it's an open source thing people can access it uh, we do not encourage or indulge in privacy for sure that's there so now we come to the end of this session so shanji any concluding remarks before i uh, thank the audience i mean nothing but you know i mean a lot of people have shown their interest in forms of queries i would be again happy to have them in person in my journey of 30 years I'm oh, sorry, 30, uh, you know, uh, hours. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, your, I your journey on this earth is not 30 years. We know that. <laughs> no, I will be 30 this July. But yes, the journey has not been 30 years in the field of temple architecture. But yes, maybe the, it could have been something which was there in my previous life. And again, I am, you know, continuing the same thing. It could be the case. I mean, I believe in the karma and, the, and, and, the, and those things. So I just want them to be, you know, in this journey of 30 hours to learn and to also teach me something which i might not have seen because india is so diverse so vast so maybe you know you can also enlighten me so it will be a two-way process so looking forward to each and every one from 15th march onwards post holy thank you so much sushanji for taking out time to provide these insights and thank you so very much to the wonderful nearly 400 strong members who enrolled for this webinar and the wonderful audience that took time out on a Sunday to participate in this. <laughs> I really look forward to seeing you in class. Come, let's explore the beauty, art and architecture of Hindu temples in India with a young erudite scholar who's passionate about the cause. So with that, uh, I would again remind you the course begins from the 15th of March. It's a weekly class at 7 p.m. IST. You can join it from any part of the world. If you can't attend the live sessions, there are recordings available and you can participate asynchronously too. And in addition to this course on temple architecture, we have many other courses that might pique your interest. So feel free to visit the website, recommend us, gift our courses and stay connected with us. Have a wonderful weekend uh, till we meet again in the next session of the overview webinar series. Namaskar. Namaskar.